success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with team lead of the Enriquez Group, Realtor Vinny. Hi, you Road Truth listeners. Today, we have Andreas Hernandez. This is one of the rare occasions where we actually have a person on for the second time. Uh, but actually talking about a new company, um, HR Advisors LLC. Thank you, uh, Andreas, for being here today. Vinny, thanks for having me, man. This is pretty cool. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the, the rare occasion that we're uh, talking for the second time, and I think the first where we're talking, no, no, second, that we've talked about a different business. So I had the person on the second time and different business. So uh, we'll, we'll probably gonna have some overlaps if people have uh, listened to the previous one. But why don't you kind of uh, jump in into uh, HR Advisors, kind of what you guys do? Sure. So HR Advisors, uh, it's it's I'm that's me, just me. But I've been uh, advising. I started out helping um, real estate investors raise capital for their development projects, uh, helping them um model model out their projects do financial modeling and always you know putting putting the right ingredients together and then a couple of years ago I, I saw that um the country as a whole we were going to start taking climate more seriously right um and and there's going to be a shift in, in how we feel about climate change and and the the momentum of industries just going and trying to solve those problems and there's a lot of a lot of pieces to that and and I didn't know what it was but I, I wanted to be a part of that. So a couple of years ago, I started um, networking and figuring out, okay, how, how can I be a part of this industry and 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 be part of a, a solution that provides uh, solutions to real problems? And and it really it started it started building up. I started working with a few companies focused in climate tech, and I started advising them. Invested some of my own capital in some in some businesses, and then. And then a couple months ago, so it's really new. A couple months ago, it hit me. Okay, well, I have these four really cool companies I'm working with, and this is turning into a portfolio. So let's see. Okay, maybe I can roll this up into a fund and start helping other companies like these, and and start expanding and and really making an impact in in, in climate. So when you say you're working with them, and what does that what does that look like? I mean, and I know kind of advisor it has it kind of in the name. So are you kind of advisor the company by doing that? Are they paying you, or are they giving you a percentage, or how does that work? It's a mix. So like for the real estate component, I've I've invested in some of the real estate projects. Uh, real estate's focused on, and and so for the fund, there's there's a couple of things I want to focus on, not not just climate tech, but social impact, and. And that's a big thing that's starting to, to gain um, momentum is, you know, how can you how can you invest in um, diverse companies or companies that serve a diverse audience, um, companies that um, that that have a strong social impact? And then how do you measure that? So that that's what the fund is focused on. And with, with these companies, yeah, I've, I've invested some capital, some of it's sweat equity. Um, some of it is just advising on business development you know, con networking connections. How do you, uh, a lot of these companies, you know, need help with grant writing, um, uh, setting up operations, uh, you, you just, you know, just getting the business off the ground or sometimes it's just the sounding board when, when the founder needs, you know, just some feedback. I may not be the expert, but I can maybe help find the expert or just give them, give them, an, you know, some advice. So I, I know you said it's kind of a mixture of both. So, on some of them, I know for the real estate ones, you were investing in them. For the other ones, is it more so that you're like buying their company by giving your time for capital, or how does that? I mean, what does that look like? Because I've had, I mean, I've had other venture capitalists here, and I know you're more hyper focused on uh, the effect of the companies and how they're going to kind of help um, how the kind of world goes. And I've had venture capitalists on here that aren't investing the financial aspect of it, but they're investing their time and for their time they're getting basically a percentage of the company. I mean, is that yeah. kind of your model or? No, well, the, the ideal model is where I invest capital, right? Okay. So the, the fund is new. Um, it's only a couple months old. So I'm, I'm still looking for that 
that anchor LP to help solidify the fund and and really get this going. So, okay. so the, the the ideal structure is where we invest the capital into the company and and really just really get it going. Um, so, but what I've been doing is, and many startup, you know, business owners will bootstrap and do what they can. So that's that's where I'm at right now. Is okay. I I don't have the capital, but I'll I'll do what I can and then. My main goal right now is raising capital. Gotcha. Okay. So right now you're kind of raising the capital. And then once yeah. you raise the capital, then it's going to be trying to look for, I guess, the uh, the entities that you think would be good investments. Yeah. That, so that's part of it, right? The So if you find it, L, LPs, they'll want to know, okay, how do you, what do you, what's your due diligence? What's your track record? Um, do you have a process on, on how you invest in these companies or what do you look for? And they're, they're relying on on you as the venture fund to find the right investments to, to get a return on their capital. Um, but then this also has the added, added layer of the, the social impact component, right? So there's investors out there, family offices and, and foundations that not only does the money need to be returned with, with, a, with, a, with an ROI, but it also needs to have some sort of social impact. And, mm -hmm. and how is that measured? How do you measure that? And and you know what 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 do those those impacts look like? So so there there's a lot there's a couple of components that we have to put together and and yet we have to perform. And, and kind of I mean I guess jumping back a little bit, um, I mean your other business or your your previous business that we've kind of talked about was kind of more in like the, the luxury space where you yeah. know, for events and we're like that. So I mean it's it's using I guess a. a Almost you're a connector of people in essence, right? I mean, you have a structure, but you're a connector of people with that one. And then this one right here, is that kind of a, I guess, fair assessment? Yeah. So, yeah. I, and I think that's, that's any, any, when you're going to do start a business that you're going to need that skill set no matter yeah. what, right? As, as a founder, you're always going to need to be able to sell and connect people with, with wants and needs with what, you know, you're, you're going to have to be able to connect. So, yeah, that that skill set definitely applies. And then when when I was looking into this a couple of years ago, um, yeah, working on the you're talking about the Coachella Valley uh, uh, luxury rentals um, and events and weddings. Um, I, I was thinking, well, yeah, I can take these skill sets. How can I take this skill set and apply it to the venture world? Not Well, I wasn't thinking venture at the time, but I was thinking, what can how can I apply it to the climate space and yeah, those skills travel, it's business. So uh, being able to apply that and it just, it turned out, okay, I have, I've done that, but now to take it to the next level, we we can put this in a venture fund and and help even more. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's the skills that you're talking about. I mean, I guess technically for every business owner that's starting their business, being a connector of people, doing the schedule thing, I mean, how do you, I guess, refine that that ability, that skill set? Is it is it a constant thing of, I just need to be out there meeting more people, being okay with it, kind of put in back in my head, hey, this person is good for this opportunity. If this opportunity ever came about, yeah. Do you have like a, a, a system, a process? I mean, for being people that are listening that are are newer in the game or trying to kind of come out with their their next big thing. I mean, what's your process like? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So I I do keep track of there especially when i'm hyper focused on a, a type of person that i, that I want to meet i keep track of all of that mm -hmm. um and then you're going to run into other people that are just people good to know you never know so i i do have a crm system i use uh pipe drive i've used that for forever it, it's it's just very 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 simple to use for me and and i can access it on my phone and it just makes it real simple but i i keep track of um like recently, I've been keeping track of uh, foundations, potential limited partners, family offices, but then other other venture capital uh, groups, other venture VC funds, and and then I just keep track. A little note, you know, how we met, um, what what are good some good talking points. Um, so it, it is it it is active networking. You have to keep track of everything. You're not going to remember everyone that you met, even if it was a good connection and and there was good rapport. You meet a lot of people you're not going to meet you're not going to remember everything it's just we're humans so yeah i like to keep track of all all that um 
and you never know when things might come up and maybe something down the road, there might be a match and Hey, I got, I got, I got Vinny in the South Bay who might be able to help. So, so th- those are, those are things where y- y- you just have to be active with it. And, and so, and what is that process of staying top of mind with these people? I mean, is, are there people that you put into your, your CRM um, or database, right? That maybe you haven't talked to in a year or two years and you just kind of call them up out of the blue. I mean, what does that kind of look like a stay on top of mind or, or not, I guess. Well, yeah, you, you don't always have to stay top of mind. Um, there's certain, am I still there? Yeah, you're here. Okay. It went, oh, this is my screensaver one blank. Uh, you, I guess you don't always have to stay top of mind. Um, for me, as long as I, I take good notes and, and I just remember, you know, you never know where things will lead. So you want to be friendly with everyone and, and you want to be genuine with everyone. So, um, you know, you just, you just take good notes. And if you know what the last communication was you had with that person, maybe you might be able to reference that, but they, they might not even remember. Uh, so, so that, that takes time to develop. And sometimes you the circle that you have, it can only be so big, right? Mm-hmm. So there's certain people that just kind of stick um, just because the, because it resonates and you, and and the both of you are, are working on the same thing or there's you know comparable um you know you, you guys there there's certain activities that just mesh well so you just tend to stick and and it and involves and then they 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 get closer into your network um so that may not require as much work but then if there's someone that you remember from a year ago you know that just requires a little bit more work but you, you just never know where things may go now, being the HR advisor is, is, is fairly new. I mean, I guess we could just talk and and you've had success like we've talked about already with other companies that have, I mean, there's sim, some similarities. I mean, what comes first? So, so for someone that's like, let's say has an idea, right? And they don't have the funds for it and they don't have the clientele for it, right? Like in a sim, situation that I guess kind of you're in with HR advisors. I mean, what is that? what does that process look like to get the ball rolling is it putting everything on paper i mean what's that process look like yeah so for me it's really identify first step for me is okay what's the problem we're trying to solve Hmm. right um i think and and i've been guilty of this is focusing on on focusing on um businesses or or endeavors that wasn't really solving a real problem and like you know we just got out of the the whole bitcoin the the metaverse th- those types of those types of businesses had a lot of promise and so they probably still do but for me it, it, it's finally you know i'm in my early 40s i realized you know i i don't have time to be focused on pie in the sky ideas i need to be working on real world hard problems that are inevitable so energy that's that's a problem that's not going anywhere um uh, what to do with our tires that that's not going anywhere ev charging stations we you know that that's a pro it's inevitable it's going to happen affordable housing uh you know giving people a, a, an affordable place to stay that is the most basic need that we have that's a problem that's not going away especially after this you know the the we're, we're both in california <clears throat> We know how expensive it is to live out here just in, in a family doing well struggles so that those are real problems that are, are not going away so for me it's uh, okay what what kind of problem are you working on if, and is that is that a problem worth solving is that a real problem and then the next thing is okay just laying out your plan um put put the money aside for a moment and just figure out okay what 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 do you need on your team? What are your skills? What are you bringing to the table? Um, and and how would you want to execute that plan? Just and it doesn't have to be a very you know detailed business plan, but just have have some goals in mind and understand have have a direction where you want to go, and and then go go backwards from there. Let's figure out okay how do we get to that point? And then how? I mean, how far advanced are you? Are you looking from that from that point? Is it like a six months kind of time frame? A year? I mean, year and a half? I mean, how far in advance do you actually kind of look and build out? Well, yeah, I mean, the further you go, the more the plan's going to change, right? Yeah. Everything changes, right? So, 
I would I would say, all right, let's let's go to a year. Let's it depends on what you're doing. Is it a service? Is it a product? If it's a product, then you get into like, how do I build the prototype? What what does that look like? What what can get me to the prototype first? And whatever that takes, a year or or less than that. Um, if it's a service, you know how I, I would have to go back to my IT consulting days, but I would say, okay, who who's the ideal customer? and and start building around that can i talk to the ideal customer and maybe get some feedback on what kind of service they need or is this a problem that that they need help with mm -hmm. so um i guess it, it's, it all depends on what type of business it is there there's there's some businesses <clears throat> that i've been talking with we i was in san francisco climate week a few weeks ago met so many cool people so many in, in, innovations in, in the climate space there was one that the founder, she was working on how to make launching uh, rockets more efficient and and uh, less pollutive. And I didn't realize this was a big problem, but launching rockets into space, it's very expensive. I'm sure we can all assume that, but it's like 30% of the cost and it's very pollutive. So, so many emissions. And um, so that's a huge problem. And so to develop a product like that, obviously it's gonna take years so so it all it all depends on on what you're going to build now kind of building i mean hr advisors what's been like the the, the biggest hiccup hurdle and kind of, and i know it's again still fairly early on it but mm -hmm. what's what's been the the biggest kind of uh pushback so pushback right, would probably be my experience or lack of experience in in vc in the vc world i don't have that track record i don't have uh that Stanford or Harvard degree, which I think goes a long way. Um, and it should, right? Uh, but I'm, I'm learning a lot about the industry and how <clears throat> it's, it seems like it's a, it's a club, right? And But there's a lot of people um, trying to open it up, which is I think this is a, is a great time to get into it. Um, everyone's saying it's going to be an uphill battle. Yeah, yeah, I know it's, it's going to be an uphill battle. It's going to be hard. Um, but that's fine. Hard is fine. Uh, and, and, and the, the VC world in, in general, like from a finance, finance perspective or an economic stand, standpoint, um, the VC investment has gone down a lot this year, just, just because of the economy. So there, there's a lot going against it, but you persevere, you just keep going. Well, I mean, so you're still getting quote unquote doubters, I guess, in building this this next company then, huh? Sounds like. I well, no, I, I guess you get just feedback, like, okay, this is this is the state of the industry. Um and and no one's ever said, no one's ever flat out said, no, you can't do this, or or it's not it's not possible, or I wouldn't recommend it. Um you just you just say you just say you just get a lot of feedback saying, you know, it might be hard to do it or it, it, it's just uh it's just a long road got it well now if, if we were talking in, in five years from now where do you see yeah. like the the growth potential of uh hr advisors so <coughs> excuse me five years from now i would love to have this first fund fully capitalized and working on another fund um to focus maybe on another niche maybe in climate or another social impact centric type fund um that that would be ideal um yeah so who knows what the world will look like five years from now but we know that the climate climate change problem isn't going away so there's going to be more opportunities more challenges and uh so the, the yeah focus some somewhere on in that space that would be great five years from now yeah I know I'm jumping around a little bit. I just think that it popped in my head when you talked before, when you're talking about actually these investors uh, into basically what you're trying to build, they're yeah. talking about the, the return on investment. I mean, so what what is that ballpark ROI that they're kind of looking for or you're relaying to them that you think you can pull off? Yeah. And in the VC world, they're looking for home runs, right? So traditionally, the VC world, they'll they'll invest like in 20 to 30 companies and expect maybe two of them to, to come, you know, to, to, uh, more than double their money, more than, uh, like hundred come out hundred X. Oh, wow. Right. So, 
So there, there's high expectations, but there also there's also a high failure rate. Yeah. So you know, out of, you know, 28 of those 30 would fail, and and two of them would be would be home runs. Mm-hmm. What I'm I'm looking for is a balanced approach. That's why I have real estate in the portfolio. Um, I want to have. Uh, so for me, the real estate is the is a conservative investment where we're we're investing in affordable housing or opportunity zone developments, mm-hmm. and that that offer consistent returns throughout the, it's a 10 year fund. So consistent returns, you're, you're providing a good, um, affordable housing, helping families, uh, live in, in nice areas. Um, and then you probably know about the opportunity zones, right? And the real estate benefit of it. Yeah. 10 year. Yeah. And then the max benefit is 10 years. Yeah. So, so that's that's the conservative part of the portfolio, and then I have other companies already in the portfolio that are cash flowing already. So so that's already a positive signal that they're going to do well. And then there's more there's riskier investments. The wave to energy is early early stage, but if it hits, it could hit really big. Um, I think the number sixty two percent of the U.S. energy needs are on the coast. So if we were able to harvest that energy from the coast of the U.S., that's more than half of the energy that the country needs. And that's just the U.S. There's there's island nations where their their energy is super expensive. There's there's Africa has a huge coastline. Um, so that that's all over the world. The the energy potential is is limitless. So uh so that that could hit it big. So what what I'm from a fund manager's viewpoint, you know, like if, if you're going to invest, if you're going to manage a fund, you I think you want it to be balanced so that if if some of these big investments don't pay off, you still have a conservative investment behind it. That's still going to to recover most of your money. Um, and for people that are just I mean, jumping there are not really familiar with opportunity zones. I mean, they're usually uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like underbelt areas that, that are looking for funding. If you basically invest in those uh, after 10 years, I mean, you get basically a tax. You take your money out like no, it's not fully tax free, is it? After 10 years, your capital gains is tax yeah. free. It is tax free. OK, so 10 yeah. years. Yeah. Capital gains uh, tax free. So it's 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 an avenue for people that are looking to invest their money and not have to to pay Uncle Sam as much or pay Uncle Sam. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely a great avenue. Not a lot of people, well, there's not as many people as I thought that, that knew about it. Yeah. And so it's a great program by the federal government. So if you, if you go online, there, there's a map that shows where all the opportunity zones are. And if you notice, like San Diego doesn't have a lot, right. Yeah. They, they're not trying to develop, <laughs> develop yeah. San Diego, but there, there are places like in Coachella Valley where I spent a lot of time in the desert, but there's, there's huge, huge, you know, on areas of undeveloped land that are marked as opportunity zones. And, and then the idea is, okay, build workforce, workforce housing, help, help the farm workers. They need places to live. Um, You know, places like Coachella Valley, they have a lot of luxury, like Palm Springs, they have a lot of luxury homes, but, and, but they also have a lot of agriculture and who who's going to work at the at, uh, on those farms, right? They, they need workforce housing, and where are they going to live? They need places that are affordable and that can support their families. They need educate, you know, they need the schools. So it's it's a whole ecosystem, and these opportunity zones make it more, you know, incentivize developers to to develop there and and provide good housing, and knowing that they don't have to rely on high rents. They, they 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 are already in the black with the tax incentives and they're they you don't have to rely on what the market's doing as much um, because you already you you're already in the black going into the project you just have to hold it for 10 years so there are different benefits there's a five and seven year marker yeah. uh, that you don't get the full benefit but you do get benefits but the the, the max benefit is 10 years um Thank you so much, uh, Andreas, for, for being here today. If people are listening and they want to basically reach out to you about investing, about basically maybe they have a company or like that, what's the best way of getting more information? Sure. Um, email is always easiest for me. Uh, email seems a little bit old school now, but <laughs> email, uh, uh, I, I am on Twitter as well. 
Um, I don't remember my handle, but I'm sure you can <laughs> it somewhere. Uh, but yeah, the email email is easiest. Uh, you want to say the email fast? The phone? Yeah, Andres A N D R E S at H Star Cap dot com. One, one last question, and I think you might have kind of talked about it. So the the portfolios that you're you're, you're building out, where you're, you're adding in a couple different companies for for this kind of set or whatever. So when an <coughs> investor uh, is looking to invest in, into this round of investments, they're getting a piece of each of those companies, correct? Right. So yeah, the, it's so an LP, a limited partner, will invest in our fund. Yeah. And then the fund invests into those companies equity. And, and is there what's and if if you can't say it, I mean on your, I mean full understand you can you can tell the next. It, you can't say it, but um, is do they get a set percentage as kind of like a like a hard money lender, or they actually get if the if the companies go well, they're getting a, a better piece of the pie, or how does that kind of kind of look um, for their investment? So I I can I can speak maybe in general terms, like what yeah. what the industry standard. So what what generally works is there's um, there's a waterfall structure. Okay. So the investors, the so the the fund manager generally gets paid a two percent management fee. Okay. Based based on the the money put into the fund. Okay. And and that goes into legal administration, like like everything it takes to manage the fund itself. There's a lot of legal involved. Um, and then and then the fund gets uh twenty percent of the returns they generate. So, so the, the fund is incentivized to get as much, you know, the, the max returns as possible. And then the investors get their, their 80% of, so they get their return, their, their principal mm. plus uh, 80% of the profits. So, and then in, in this instance with, with investing in equity, investing in these companies, the only, the only way you can actually uh, where the transaction occurs is the company either has to sell their shares, either be acquired by another business or go public mm -hmm. or someone has to buy those shares. And that's, that's, that's the, that's the, uh, that transaction. That's the event where you, you would get gain those profits. So it, you basically could be sitting on equity in these properties or companies. I mean, not, or property, I guess too, um, for I mean, 10, 15 years, uh, until you get that call saying, "Hey, they're going to be selling their shares, or they're going to be selling the company," and that's kind of when you get paid out. So there's not a set deadline, I guess. Uh, no, but the the fund there is a deadline for the fund. So the fund is ten years. Gotcha. Okay. So ten years long. So then the LPs, the the limited partners in the fund, know okay, after ten years, we're going to be getting your money back gotcha. and, and your investments. But in the meantime, there could be cash, there could be dividends paid out to them on a regular yeah. basis. Uh, depending on cash flow of the of the companies, um, so but I would anticipate that, especially because of the the real estate, there will be mm -hmm. dividends paid to the investors, and and then if there's some sort of exit event, so let's say, you know, the way the energy hits it off and earlier than than scheduled, earlier than planned, and it's you know we're five years into it, and there's some sort of you know there a big energy company wants to buy it for a billion dollars. Yeah, let's go. Let's sell the shares. Let's cash out, and then let's pay our investors, give them their return, and then everyone's happy. Um, so that, yeah, that's that's how that would work. One last question: What's the minimum uh, amount that someone have to invest into this fund to uh, to be part of HR Advisors? I guess. So th this fund we're we're raising is a hundred million, okay. and so we're we're looking for like ten. 10 million to 20 million dollar checks got it got it well if you um if you're listening right now and you're looking to invest or you know someone that that is looking for opportunity reach out to andreas uh in the show notes i got the his their website if not go for the email uh if you have a, a company or a product or something like that and you're looking for venture capitalists to kind of um help you take to that next level again reach out uh thank you andreas for being here i know 
everyone listening, I mean, I know we didn't really talk about basically his journey of getting here. We kind of more talk about specifics of this process of it. And I mean, it's a, a second timer. So you got to go <laughs> listen to his, his last one. Go go back and search uh, Andreas Hernandez and you'll, you'll listen to his last one. And then you can listen to this one and then you can listen to the last one again and kind of work your way back and forth like a, like a tennis match. Thank you guys for listening. Please subscribe. Uh, please share and uh, go find Andreas. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.